Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Harold. You can also call me Faradaus. That is my Muslim name. My dear brothers and sisters, today I would like to share with you some of the challenges that I face in my life after embracing Islam, which I hope, inshallah, God willing, may bring some comfort to your heart knowing that it relates to you and that like you, I'm not spared the test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before I begin, as some of you might be going through a tough time right now, know that despite all the problems that you have, this life, dunya, is just a test. There will come a time when it will all be over and all our efforts in pleasing the Almighty and holding strong to our deen will be rewarded. Tests are merely an extension of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy towards us to help increase the level of our iman, faith, and to help us remember all the blessings that He bestowed upon us. It's also to help us to grow closer to Him. One of the challenges that I had after embracing Islam was getting my family and friends to understand my new way of life. Like most who get their information from the media and from those who choose to mislead others, Islam to them was undesirable, backward and a fool's religion. Therefore, this makes it even harder for me to explain to them, especially when they are not ready to lend a listening ear. Doing these YouTube videos was also a way for me to share Islam with them in a less confrontational manner. And should they chance upon my video, come to see the beauty of Islam. Inshallah, God willing, from here, may they start to open their hearts. I also hope that my videos may be valuable content for others to share as well, should they need help with conveying Islam to those they love. Just days after my shahada, some of the challenges that I faced was rejecting food that was not halal from both my family and friends because they did not know what exactly it meant for food to be halal. Sometimes they think it's just Malay dish or Indian food with no pork. They also felt that since no one was watching, it didn't matter if I followed it or not. Hence, because I stood firm to my beliefs, I was viewed as a difficult person who didn't want to accommodate I honestly feel terrible for rejecting them, knowing that they have my interest at heart. Sometimes I would try to explain to them the reasons behind why we avoid food that is not halal. I always have to battle between taking the soft approach to reason with them, like explaining why not eating their food was not me showing that I did not love them, or to just share with them references from the Holy Quran, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words, where he clearly instructed how we should live. I love my religion and I want to give my 100% in practicing it. But I also know that it's not easy for them to accept something new and unusual. When all words fail, I would keep quiet and try to tolerate their unhappiness. Sometimes due to their ignorance, their remarks can be quite hurtful and provocative. And even I would sometimes falter, lose my patience, argue, and sound irritated at them. I regretted all my bad responses as I knew it took them further from experiencing the beauty of Islam. Like all of us, I'm fallible and I make mistakes. So I tell myself to try again each time I fail and to do my best to be the best version of myself every day. Whenever I'm down with such problems, I know my only answer was to pray harder and to read the Quran and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill my heart with more patience, love, humility, peace, compassion and positivity. I always tell myself that these tests that were given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were his way of making me stronger and building more sabr, patience in me. Besides my family and friends, when I was working in a different company from where I am today, it was less diverse and there were hardly any Muslims that I came across. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would test me with colleagues at work that lacked the understanding of Islam and what it means to be a Muslim. There were days when I had to lunch on my own because my colleagues wanted to go to a place that had no halal options around and to avoid making them feel bad, I would usually say that I have other plans that day. Over time, due to the lack of socializing with them, I became a bit of an outcast in the group. And I felt like I was no longer seen as a Chinese or someone who shared the same culture as them. Although I'm always friendly and we smile at each other, whenever we crossed paths, it was like we only knew each other on the surface. Nonetheless, being alone sometimes is not all bad because I would spend more time thinking about my wife. It was also teaching me to be self-reliant and to develop more confidence in building my happiness. Sometimes I do desire moments of solitude as it helps me center my thoughts and appreciate the little things that I have. I also find that these little hardships or sacrifices that we make in life help make our prayers and supplications a lot sweeter and it builds more sincerity in our hearts. Besides this challenge, as the coronavirus has affected many of our lives, I feel that I should also share this story. When I was a little boy, my dream was to be a fighter pilot. It was all that I ever wanted. The dream started when my dad brought home a movie one day called Top Gun. And as a little boy, after watching the movie, I was fascinated by the thrills of flying, seeing the world from above, and the freedom of soaring through the heavens rising above the clouds. So I put all my time and energy to make that dream a reality. 
I would do my best to do well in school and also put in the time to train in other areas that I thought fit the attributes of a pilot. I watched movies about flying to strengthen my belief and would imagine I was in a cockpit whenever I rode my bicycle. I would even give myself a call sign and do radio calls to myself as if I was texting the aircraft on a runway. I basically tried all that I could think of to get me ready for the day to become a real fighter pilot. At the age of 19, after graduating with a diploma, I had to serve my national service. I immediately went on to sign up to be a pilot. After passing my medical checkup, computerized pilot aptitude screening system test, the compass test, and interview, I went to Australia after I commissioned as an officer. I had the opportunity to fly a few sorties during the course, but my dream came to an abrupt stop when I failed my test and I had to return home to Singapore. I still have a vivid memory of my last flight with my flight instructor. As my aircraft approached the runway to land, I saw my dream ending at the same time. I even remembered myself begging the flight instructor to give me a second chance to prove myself. But he said that my learning curve was not steep enough. I was sad, bitter, and I felt lost. I kept asking myself why wasn't I good enough? Why wasn't I given a second chance? Fast forward to last year on the 26th of April, I finally found the courage again to pursue my dream of flying. I applied my interest to join Singapore Airlines as a commercial pilot. One of the reasons why it took me so long to continue my pursuit of my dream as a pilot was because I was afraid of failing again. And I thought that if I tried other professions, I might find similar joy in doing those things. However, a big part of me still missed flying, so I decided to give myself another go to fight for this dream. My application was given consideration, and after completing the interview and computerized test, I received a letter of rejection from the airlines. This time I lost all hope of pursuing this dream. I still remember to myself the number of prayers, du'a, supplications and tahajuds late night prayers that I did before sending in my application to be a pilot. I wondered to myself many times why they weren't answered. Furthermore, I had just left my previous job, so I was also jobless at that time. I started driving Uber, then switched to driving Grab after they left Singapore, and also took on multiple jobs. I was a Grab driver during the day and a waiter at night. My job as a waiter did not last long as the restaurant had to close due to the lack of customers dining in to keep the business going. I remembered moving on to coach swimming lessons, but I couldn't continue when I found out after teaching for some time that my skin was allergic to chlorine. So I switched to driving Grab full-time from 6 in the morning to 10 p.m. daily. I did that while sending out resumes and continuing my search for a full-time job. I met many nice folks along the way who helped tweak my resume and referred me to the jobs that they thought were suitable for me. I even tried sending out my resumes to the job portal, but none of them responded. I honestly thought that driving was going to be my job for life and wondered if I could support my family. Despite all that I had gone through, my test was not over. I met with an accident while driving one day. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but I had to fork out a chunk of my savings to pay the insurance and repair the car. Circumstances became harder when I fell sick and had to visit the doctor and pay for my medical bills. This also meant that I couldn't get on the road to drive, which therefore affected my earnings. I never thought this day would come. I remembered asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when will his test be over for me and if he could ease my hardship. I did not feel like I was getting any answer, but all I knew was that I had to have sabr, patience, to keep holding on to my faith and trust in him. I may not understand why right now, but I believe that my life and fate was in his hands. During this time, these were the verses from the Quran that I held dear to my heart. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا أسعها لها ما كسبت وإليها ما اختسبت ربنا لا تؤاخنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تهمل لنا إسرا كما هملته ولا الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تهملنا ما لا تقتلنا به وأحفونا وارفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانسولا على القوم الكافرين So basically what I recited earlier was verses from two chapters from the Quran. The first one is Surah Al-Fatiha, which is chapter 1, also known as the opening, verse 1 to 7. What it's basically saying is, In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. To you do we worship and to you do we seek help. Show us the straight path, the path of those whom you have bestowed your grace upon and those whose portion is not wrath and who will go not astray. And the second recitation that I did is from Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 286. On no soul does Allah place a burden greater than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns and it suffers every ill that it earns. O Lord, condemn us not if we forget or fall into error. O Lord, Lay not on us a burden like that which you didn't lay on those before us. O Lord, lay not on us a burden greater than we have strength to bear. Blot out our sins and grant us forgiveness. Have mercy on us. You are our protector. Help us against those who stand against faith. 2020 came and things took a turn for the better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally blessed me with a full-time job and started working during office hours again from 9am to 6.30pm. Then the coronavirus came, and all of a sudden, all our lives and jobs took a hit. Several industries were hit harder by the pandemic and started letting go of their employees or putting them on unpaid leave. Among many that were impacted, the aviation industry was one of those that took the hardest hit. Many pilots were grounded and had to take a pay cut. Some pilot trainees were let go, but they had to still pay their debts to the airline for the training they underwent while looking for a new job. Looking back, I'm truly grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me from this calamity because I was able to keep my job. He did not answer my prayers nor supplications to be a pilot at that time, but it turned out that it was for my own good. It was in His infinite wisdom and love for me that I was spared from that calamity. No words can express how grateful I am to the Almighty for watching over me and I thank myself for being patient and holding on to my faith in Him. Today my stories may just be announced or a fraction of what many of you are going through but I hope at least some part of it benefits you. I hope that after hearing my stories you find some comfort in your heart to know that you are not alone and that you are more encouraged to rest your worries and problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope you will continue to trust in Him for He is the best of all planets. He is the knower of the seen and unseen, the all-powerful, the almighty, Lord of all the worlds and the universes. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. He is indeed the most gracious and the most merciful. I wish all of you out there better days ahead, more peace and success in all the good that you do. To those facing oppression like our brothers and sisters in France, China, the Middle East and all around the world, know that life is just a test and that all this will end in His time. Your sabr, patience and efforts in holding firmly to your faith will eventually be rewarded. Your sacrifices will most certainly not be in vain. I pray to the Almighty that He will keep all of you safe, ease you in all your affairs, and provide comfort to your heart. My heart goes out to all who have suffered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always be a guiding light for you even in your darkest moments. I hope this sharing has been beneficial for you. Please share it if you think it will benefit others too. Please hit the subscribe and like button and turn on notifications if you wish to see more of my videos. To all my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan. Even though I've not met most of you, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'll meet you in paradise, Jannah, one day. And to everyone out there, I hope you have a beautiful day ahead. Bye.